Russia overnight launched its long-anticipated attack on Ukraine. The video showed what Ukrainian officials described as columns of Russian tanks. These Ukrainian soldiers told us it was Russian-backed separatists firing on their front-line positions. They are Russian airborne forces. They are now in control of this airport. And within the past few seconds, just before you came to us, they were engaged in a firefight. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war. And now he and his country will bear the consequences. King's Dream Entertainment. Bruce Lawn. As many of you guys know by now, Russia invaded Ukraine last night, and it is a rather tense situation. I'm going to be unpacking some of that here, uh, some of my background coming from this region and the potential consequences of this. But before we get into that, guys, uh, here's a passage that many of us are familiar. This is uh, Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 24. This is about the last days. And he says, this is verse 6, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen. But the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Following Jesus for quite a few years, um, I've had that scripture read often from the context of a maybe Sunday morning platform to what people are going through internationally. When I came to the Lord, it was right after 9-11, and there's a lot of tension in the Middle East, and people were nervous, rightfully so, after the towers came down and we invaded Iraq, Afghanistan, that whole bit. So I want to make sure something that as we're seeing people react to this and people are talking about World War III and all that kind of thing. Listen, these are serious times, but according to Jesus, wars and rumors of wars are just the beginning of the birth pains, and we've had a lot of wars. So I'm going to recap you basically on where this kind of all stems from, what it seems like Putin's desire is, and I'm going to reference some, in my opinion, trusted news sources that I would recommend you guys kind of keep up with to get a balanced view on this. So with regards to this, and, and ultimately what we shouldn't be doing as followers of Jesus uh, the Russian Empire, pre-Soviet Union, uh, was was fairly big and massive. And after formed the Soviet Union and communism as we knew it, then the Soviet Union fell. And there was this agreement with Russia that was now not as massive as the Soviet Union that it wouldn't allow Ukraine and that region to enter our NATO alliance. And because Russia being destabilized in the West, trying to work with Russia post-communism fall, that was kind of the agreement. And as time went further and further on, there kept seeming to be this look that Ukraine was potentially going to join NATO. Now, in reality, that wasn't going to happen, but that was initially Russia's kind of like justification of uh, why they felt threatened, quote unquote, threatened by the Ukraine. As things have unfolded and as things have transpired, just even within the last weeks, uh, there's been quite a few different variables that have came into play. And so I'm going to play a couple clips from some people that are a bit savvy from this. And I'm going to tie in some of my own personal story with, with this and then give you guys one action point of something we really shouldn't be doing uh, with how we talk about this as followers of Jesus. So this is Breaking Points. I uh, support them with a as a monthly partner. I like independent balanced news, and I really do feel like they're independent. Sagar leans conservative. Uh, Crystal is a progressive. So you're going to get some sort of like balance with regards to what they're saying. And listen to what Sagar says and what he opens up with here to kind of give us a bit of a timeline of what transpired intelligence and, and I, frankly I think I got it wrong um, in terms of what happened here. I never expected Putin and uh, Russia in order to do something so frankly colossal, colossally foolish. He has fulfilled the dreams of the neocons now in Washington for all time. He I've never heard a reporter open up with saying they got it wrong. Okay, what is he talking about? Well initially when there was reports of a Russian invasion in Ukraine, a lot of the, the, the media, maybe some of the more right-leaning media, was like, ah, it's a big nothing sandwich. There's nothing going to happen. And Sagar was kind of on this, saying that it would be stupid for, for Putin to invade Russia, so on and so forth. And he uh, owns it here, surprisingly. So let me play the rest of this clip for you guys and the possible ramifications of this on the world at large. 
We'll be discussing throughout the entire show a full-scale NATO deployment to the eastern flank. He, this is the greatest thing that could have ever happened to the U.S. defense budget. I mean, there will now be a re renewed justified calls. Already I'm seeing this morning the German uh, former defense minister and others saying they're going to be re-upping uh, re their armaments. So we are looking at a whole new era of geopolitics yes, here. And indeed. it is entirely Putin's fault. It and, is. And yeah. So Putin clearly violated here. All right. And it goes back to is... Ukraine, part of Russia, and this is my experience. Now, some of you guys may or may not know this about me. I'm, I am I was born in the former Soviet Union, okay? And, and Putin views the Soviet Union as the biggest collapse and, and a big travesty to, to Russian history. Now, Ukrainians and Russians are similar, and, and the DNA is similar, and I even ran my 23andMe DNA test recently, and I found out that 52% of my DNA is... Uh, classified as as Russian, West Asian, Ukrainian. It's all one cluster, like everything kind of Moscow and over, okay? My, my, my other side is Armenian, okay? Now, all of these nations used to be a part of the Soviet Union. Azerbaijan, where I was born, used to be part of the Soviet Union. So we spoke Russian, and some people spoke Armenian. I'm ethnically Armenian, and some folks also spoke Arzi. In the Ukraine, it's similar. They're, they're, they have a distinction of eth ethnic identity, meaning they're not Russians, so, so this is important to get into. They, they have their own language. <laughs> they have their own uh, cultural norms. So for Putin to just assume that, like, oh, this is, we're, we're going to reunify Ukraine, is kind of wild, right? It's it's kind of nonsensical. And you're, you saw, you've seen similar things with, with what happened in Azerbaijan going further and further into Armenia. But it is a very bizarre approach, and it really is trying to relive the glory days, not of the Soviet empire, that which, which again, I was born under Soviet Russia, but pre-Soviet Empire. This is going back to the Russian Empire of like 1911. Okay, so this is some really bizarre uh, thinking on his part. And I don't know if it's because he's getting older. I think he's 69 years old. But folks that are older remember Russia and the Soviet Union and then know what came after the Soviet Union. Okay, so uh, that's kind of some of the, the, the context. Putin blowing away all of our estimations and going in and doing this whole bit is now going to reinvigor the American military industrial complex. This is going to reinvigor a lot of uh, military spending. This is some this is some wild stuff, right? So let me play some more of this. And it is entirely Putin's fault. It and is. and yeah. China uh, sort of tacitly aligning with Russia. Yep, that's right. Um, basically calling for you know lessening of hostilities all the, mm. all around. So this very you know wishy washy both sides right. kind of a statement when clearly one hundred percent. The aggressor here is Putin and is Russia. You know, so why is this important? Well, because China has a similar relation to Taiwan. And so they're probably watching this like, yo, we, we already took back Hong Kong. Right. And if the West is going to allow Russia to take back Ukraine, quote unquote, uh, China could potentially try to do the same thing in Taiwan. Now you're really into a, a very dangerous global uh, area, right? And initially China was like, no, you got to respect. But now they're kind of becoming way more wishy-washy with how they're talking about this. Uh, the moment when I started to think, oh, this could be, this is about more than just NATO. And this could be what the intelligence community is telling us is when he gave that long speech. That's right. And I know you're talking about that yeah, more really in the monologue. Into the history of it. Because yes, because there was there were pieces of it that were the sort of realist case mm -hmm. of the Russian security interest concerns about right. NATO expansion eastward, concerns about Ukraine and the even the possibility in the future of Ukraine being part of NATO. But a lot of the speech so that was the initial quote unquote concern of Putin, all that's out the window because they made it very clear Ukraine's not joining NATO. NATO's the alliance, they're not joining it. Okay? So was a nationalist speech about a sort of return to Russian glory, yeah, Russia, Russian, Russia, empire. Russian <laughs> empire, Russian imperialism yeah. asserting itself on the global stage. And so when I when we saw that, that seemed to me like a real turning point and indication that there was a lot more going on here than just those sort of realist interests. And that's the only way I can wrap my head around what's been done here is that nationalism is a hell of a drug because there is no doubt, obviously, this is nationalism 
is a hell of a drug. People all around the world are going to suffer in certain ways, oh, yeah. but the Russian people are going to suffer greatly as well. And yes. we'll get more to, you know, what the specific Western response is likely to be and how far they could go and what that would ultimately look like. Um, but let's talk about some of the specifics of this invasion, because mm -hmm. this went, as you said, far beyond just these eastern separatist territories. You know, the original question was, okay, are they going to try to reclaim the entire uh, Luhansk and Donetsk regions? Well, those battles are happening now. They're clearly trying to regain those enti right. the entirety of those territories. Putin's speech, she kind of gives this, like, subliminal jab of, well, we're going over uh, based on reports that we've gotten, and we're just protecting our own self-interests with this whole Ukraine thing, right? And then he... he bizarrely called them Nazis while the president of Ukraine is Jewish and the president was like, how are you calling us Nazi? But there's this weird kind of subtle hint jab at like, hey, we're going in based on our foreign intelligence, so what? And it was this subtle jab at America going in to Afghanistan and Iraq on faulty intelligence and, and kind of meddling into other affairs. And he's just kind of, ah. initially when this came out, people were like, the Ukrainian army, they're gonna be, they'll be fine. They'll hold off the, the Russian invasion. And, and, you know, they may or may not be taken captive this whole bit. That, that was what I was hearing. It was like, Ukraine, they got a better, better military. They'll be able to hold off Russia, da, da, da. And then listen to what happened last night look like the Ukrainian military is faring particularly well. Zelensky actually, not only has he introduced martial, martial law, he's also said they are issuing firearms yes. to everyone who is of fighting age, expecting this to these battles to come to town squares. You I have mean, that language? Yeah, I can read. Issuing firearms. Think about this for a second, guys. He's issuing firearms to anybody who's of age because this may come into the time time squares this is so much bigger than just politics this is like real people real people you the ukrainian people having to potentially step up and fight non trained soldiers they just giving out guns like yo we got to we go, we got to do we got to defend it like if the army is overtaken we're giving the people weapon this is wild stuff we will give weapons to anyone who wants to defend the country, be ready to support Ukraine in the squares of our cities, promising there uh, also last night, you will not see our backs, you will see our faces. So they're standing tall, well, as tall as they can. If this is the biggest land invasion in Europe since, I think, since World War II and one of the biggest land invasions since the 70s globally. So this is not, this is next level, right? This is, this is very, very next level in terms of what's happening. And the issue here is there's going to be civilians that get hurt. There's going to be children that get hurt. Like, this is really, really bad, which leads me to my last point, which is what we shouldn't be doing right now. Okay, hear me loud and clear. And I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you what to believe politically. I'm not trying to tell you what position you should take with who you vote for. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say any of that. What I am going to try to encourage you is how we as followers of Jesus, it's only if you're a follower of Jesus. If you're not a follower of Jesus, I don't, you know, you do what you want, but just, just keep this in mind. How we then spe speak and spin this as follower of Jesus and what narrative we're going to get behind. Listen to this next part. And this is very disappointing because I'm seeing this stuff on my timeline. And please, please, please don't be this person. Republicans have been right. truly divided about how they want to deal with all of this. Yeah, this has been a fascinating kind of thing to watch. I'm curious to see how the Ukrainian actual invasion will change things. But uh, Trump I can't help but uh, Trump himself. So here's a statement that he put out. Go ahead and put this up there on the screen. Quote, Putin is playing Biden like a drum. It's not a pretty thing to watch. This kind of been a really gross cheering on, Crystal, by a lot of segments of the American right that I've observed in which they kind of relish seeing the world order crumble in order to own the libs and be like, see, this didn't happen under Trump. I mean, look, that's empirically true. But also, you know, I would say that in a time like this, you can criticize the president fine, which I do plenty. But, you know, I think like cheering, actively cheering, cheering on, on Putin is another on Putin. And again, I hate how much this sounds like some Russiagate stuff. Like you can parse it between like, okay, you know, what Trump says about Putin or what, you know, pursuing better relations with Russia, that's not treason or whatever. Uh, also praising Putin in this, it's also not treason. I mean, it's kind of gross in terms of what you're doing. And that's where I would put the current domestic political situation. There's a lot of conservatives that watch this, this channel. I tend to lean conservative in a lot of my views, but this is not the time to own the libs. This is not the time to say, I told you so. This is not this is not the time. And, and, and the Tucker Carlson's and the Charlie Kirk's and all like, 
again, conservatives, like don't don't do that on your timeline. Don't feed into this stupid administration if they just lip tards got don't. This is not it. These are real people's lives. This is going to affect us here at home. Okay, gas prices are probably going to go up. Food prices are going to go up. This is not the time to, to, to get into your, I'm going to dunk on, let's go Brandon. Oh, let's go Brandon. Oh, like this is not the time for that. This is not the time for that. This should not polarize us even more. Don't, don't, don't do that. If Trump was enough, it's just maybe, maybe not have it. Don't do that. Don't, maybe it wouldn't have happened. Maybe, I don't know. But th this is not the time to do that. This is the time for us to pray for the Ukrainian people, like really praying for the people. I saw a clip this morning, and again, I'm not saying this is all conservatives, but conservatives being quiet about this stuff is like Christians being quiet and never never addressing the nonsensical preaching of a Joel Osteen or of a Creflo Dollar. I saw a thing this morning, uh, the guy from Breitbart talking about how Putin is, 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 is good because he is anti-woke and because there's only two genders in Russia. Don't, don't be this guy, please. And the reason that Putin ain't woke, he is anti-woke. The Russians, people still know which bathroom to use. Don't, don't, don't be this guy. I'm not going to play the whole clip because it's definitely going to get demonetized. Conservatives, Christians, don't play into this narrative. Please don't. Don't do it. That's not it. I promise you guys, this ain't the time. You're going to look goofy. You're going to look goofy and you're not going to persuade anybody by making this into a culture war issue. This is this is this is not it. We could talk about the the lunacy on the left. We could talk about the insane stuff about children and gender. We we talk about all that stuff. This ain't it. This is the time for you just to hush up, pray, and and that's it. That's it. That's all you you know. Pray for the people of Ukraine. Stand with the people of Ukraine. Pray for the leaders. Pray for the government. And that's it. That's it. We don't need we don't need nothing else. We don't need no more. We don't need commentary like that. That's a bad look on conservatives and Christians, and there's a strong overlap. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't play into it. Don't, don't push this nonsense. It's not helpful. All right, I'm going to get out of here. Peace. Kingstream Entertainment. Bruce Lawn. Hey, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. Make sure to check the links in the description for some free resources. And if you want to learn more about my story and how I come from this region of the world, be sure to check out some of these other videos for me and YouTube recommended to you, sharing my testimony coming out here as a refugee and much more. All right. Peace.